Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Cloud Learn to Lead. Good morning to all the students. Today we will discuss very important current fairs of 26th and 27th of Jan 2022. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current fair. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you have to download our application Careers Cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily, you will see three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Most important section is the monthly. And we are providing four type of PDFs. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. Third is best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer. And fourth one is pocket PDF. It means two liners and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs in quick format before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are providing 20 most important topic wise PDF. It means if you want to cover one particular topic, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you are a banking student, we are providing three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section. But all these three things are only related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz only on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. We are providing detailed budget and economic survey. Expected question and answer will be provided to you so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing you state current fair and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years. And we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ASH10. And if you have any query, you can email us or you can call us on this number or email ID. So let's start 26th and 27th of Jan 2022 current fairs. But first of all, you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible. And you have to subscribe this channel if you're new on this platform. And join our Telegram group from the description box link so that you can get the notification on time. Here is the first question. What is the rank of India in the Corruption Perception Index? So the keyword here is Corruption Perception Index and the rank of India is 85. And how many countries are ranked under this index? Total 180 countries are ranked under this index. So you can also see here Corruption Perception Index 2021 and India's rank is 85th. And this ranking is basically released by a German based or you can say Berlin based non-profit organization which is Transparency International. This is very very important. So remember who released this index? This is one a non-profit organization Transparency International. And what is the score of India? India's score is 40. Out of 100, India's score is 40. So this score is based on the perceived levels of the public sector corruption on a scale of 0 to 100. Where 0 implies high corrupt and 100 implies very clean. And India ranks has slipped from 80th in the 2019 to 86th in 2020. But in 2021, India's rank is 85th. It means India is improved by one place. And Denmark, Finland, New Zealand, whose score is 88, have shared the first rank followed by the Norway, which, uh, which has scored 85 in the fourth rank. So you have to remember, three countries shared first rank, that is Denmark, Finland and the New Zealand. And the index relies on the 13 independent data sources and the surveys on the business executives. And this corruption perception index has been the leading global indicator of the public sector corruption since its inception in the 1995. And remember, South Sudan has ranked last on the index. So the first rank goes to Denmark, Finland, New Zealand. India's rank is 85th. This ranking is released by Transparency International. India's score is 40 out of 100. South Sudan is on the last position. And South Sudan CPA score is 11. And Pakistan has ranked on 140th position out of 180 countries. And Pakistan CPA score is just 28. It means Pakistan is behind India. And you can also remember according to the region wise like in the Asia Pacific region, in the Asia Pacific region, 
न्यूजीलैंड इज ऑन द टॉप न्यूजीलैंड बिकॉज न्यूजीलैंड स्कोर इज एटी एट एंड न्यूजीलैंड इज ऑन द टॉप सेकेंड रैंक गोज टू सिंगापुर एंड थर्ड रैंक गोज टू हॉन्गकॉन्ग टॉप दिस इंडेक्स इन द एशिया पैसेफिक रीजन एंड कंबोडिया अफगानिस्तान नॉर्थ कोरिया आर ऑन द बॉटम स्कोर बट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर न्यूजीलैंड इज ऑन द टॉप इन द एशिया पैसेफिक रीजन एंड अराउंड टू थर्ड लाइक ऑलमोस्ट सिक्सटी एट परसेंट ऑफ द कंट्रीज हैव स्कोर बिलो देन फिफ्टी इंक्लूडिंग इंडिया एंड द एवरेज स्कोर रिमेन्स एट फोर्टी थ्री सो रिमेंबर दीज थिंग्स दीज आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड रिमेंबर दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ट्रांसपेरेंसी इंटरनेशनल इट्स हेड क्वार्टर इज इन बर्लिन जर्मनी एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो रिमेंबर वन इंपॉर्टेंट इंडेक्स विच वॉज रिलीज रिसेंटली दिस इज ग्लोबल ग्लोबल पीस इंडेक्स ग्लोबल पीस इंडेक्स ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज जी पी आई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड इट इज रिलीज बाय आई ई पी आई ई पी स्टैंड फॉर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एंड पीस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस रैंकिंग इंडिया रैंक ऑन वन हंड्रेड थर्टी फिफ्थ पोजिशन आउट ऑफ वन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी थ्री कंट्रीज इट मीन्स इंडिया इज ऑन द लो स्टेट ऑफ पीस लो स्टेट ऑफ पीस एंड आइसलैंड टॉप दिस इंडेक्स Iceland top this index followed by New Zealand and the Denmark but you have to remember the top country Iceland so remember these things now we are moving to the next question which company will build world fastest artificial intelligence supercomputer which is known as RSC 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 stands for research research super cluster so this is the supercomputer name and this is the fastest artificial intelligence world fastest artificial intelligence supercomputer and this company will be meta or facebook so answer of this question is d so meta or you can say facebook ceo mark zuckerberg has announced that development of artificial intelligence supercomputer which is known as artificial intelligence research super cluster to train machine learning system across companies businesses so you can see here Facebook parent company Meta has built the fastest artificial intelligence supercomputer in the world. So its name is Artificial Intelligence Research Super Cluster. This is very important. This can be asked in exam. It is to train machine learning system across companies businesses and this supercomputer includes algorithms on the content modernization for detecting the hate speech and explicit content on the Facebook as well as on the Instagram or you can say Facebook owned companies and it will be the world fastest supercomputer once it will be completed in 2022. and it will be used uh, to design things or run programs for the metaverse which is also one of the platform of facebook and remember the supercomputer consists of 660 760 nvidia 760 nvidia ggx a100 system containing 6080 gpu or you can say graphics processing unit where's meta supercomputer is already providing up to 20 times improved performance so this is very important that's why it is called supercomputer so this question you can just remember from the uh, slide but remember the name of this supercomputer rsc and what is the meaning of rsc rsc stands for research super cluster or it is artificial intelligence based and it will be built by meta or facebook and it will be completed in the year of 2022 now moving to next question who has named as the icc men's odi cricketer of the year so remember very important even we are covering in the most important section why because it is icc award because the international cricket council has announced the 2021 edition of the icc awards so in the men's category you have to remember also you have to remember in the women's category and in the men's category odi cricketer of the year award goes to babar azam so answer of this question is a so babar azam is just 27 years old and he belongs to pakistan and uh, he was named as the icc men's odi or one day international cricketer of the year but you have to remember who was named as icc women's odi cricketer of the year we are talking about now in the women's category and this award goes to lizel lee so answer of this question is b lizel lee is just 29 years old and she belongs to south africa cricket team and she was named as the icc women's odi cricketer of the year but you have to remember in the 2020 as well in the 2020 you can see here in the 2020 icc women's 2020 cricketer of the year goes to tammy bemont and uh, uh, icc men's 2020 cricketer of the year goes to mohammad rizwan so in the 2020 category it goes to mohammad rizwan mohammad rizwan is very famous wicketkeeper of pakistan and uh, he is again 29 years old and he is named as icc 2020 cricketer of the year and uh, tammy bemont belongs to england belongs to england and names the icc women's t20 cricketer of the year and she finished this year as the 
third highest run getter in the women's T20. That's why she was named as the uh, Women 2020 Cricketer of the Year. So you can also see her. These are all categories. Like you can see her Men's 2020 Cricketer of the Year. Mohammad Rijwan belongs to Pakistan. Women 2020 Cricketer of the Year goes to Tammy Baymont, belongs to England, we already covered. Men's ODI Cricketer, Babar Azam, this was the question. Women ODI Cricketer, Lezil Lee, already covered. So, these four things we already covered. Now, comes to the next category. Men's Test Cricketer of the Year, this award goes to Joe Root. Joe Root belongs to England and very famous player. Emerging Men's Cricketer of the Year, it is goes to Janiman Malan. From belongs to South Africa and emerging woman cricketer of the year goes to Fatima Sana belongs to Pakistan. Remember Fatima Sana. But in the first row you can see the name is appearing Samriti Mandana. So this is very important player because Rachel Hehoe Flint Trophy for ICC women's cricketer of the year goes to Samriti Mandana belongs to India. This trophy is very very important and she is just 25 years old and she won Rachel Hehoe Flint Trophy for ICC Women's Cricketer of the Year. This can be asked by examiner. So this is most important question. So remember all the categories especially these four categories are very very important and you can also remember these categories like men Associated Cricketer of the Year uh, Jishan Mashood and he belongs to Oman, but don't, uh, don't remember, just read this. Woman Associate Cricketer of the Year, Andhra Mai Zepeda, uh, she belongs to Austria. And Sir Garfield Sobers Trophy for ICC Men's Cricketer of the Year goes to Shahin Afridi. Again, he belongs to Pakistan. And Empire of the Year goes to Marius Aramis, and uh, he belongs to South Africa. And uh, he recently uh, um, officiated. 100th ODI, 100th ODI between South Africa and India uh, in South Africa. This was the third ODI between the South Africa and India. So just remember this Sir Garfield Sobers Trophy for ICC Men's Cricketer of the Year goes to Shahin Afridi, Pakistan. And remember these five categories which I already covered. So moving to next section. It is a very important question section but first of all you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time. And here is our question. Election Commission of India celebrated dash edition of National Voters Day across India and this is 12th edition. Answer of this question is C. So on 25th of Jan 2022. The Election Commission of India celebrated 12th edition of National Voter Day across India to spread awareness about the importance of voting and participating in the electoral process. So you can see here this is 12th National Voter Day celebrated on the 25th of Jan 2022. And what is the theme of National Voter Day? Theme is making elections inclusive, accessible and participative. So this is the theme. So remember this. And Election Commission of India conferred the national awards for the best electoral practices in the year 2021-22 and uh, the prizes will be handed to the state and the district level officers for their performance in various fields. So you don't have to remember the categories because there are so many categories. And remember about Election Commission of India, ECI was founded on 25th of Jan 1950 as an autonomous body under the Ministry of Law and Justice under the Ministry of Law and Justice and it is to give every citizen the right to vote in the country's democratic election process. And remember National Voter Day was first celebrated in the year of 2011 to encourage active participation in India's electoral process because the turnout was very much low that's why this day was started. And uh, Election Commission of India also focuses on enrollment of new voters who have attained the 18 years of age providing voting rights under the universal adult suffrage or universal adult franchise. And the constitution uh, by the 61st amendment act of 1989 lowered the voting age to elections to the Lok Sabha and to the legislative assemblies uh, of the states from 21 years to 18 earlier. When constitution was passed, voting age was 21, but by 61st Amendment 1989, voting age was reduced to 18. And uh, at that time, the Prime Minister was Rajiv Gandhi. Rajiv Gandhi, the youngest Prime Minister of India. And uh, Election Commission of India is a constitutional body under Article 324 to 329. 324 to 329, but the main article is 324, under which all the powers, functions, tenure, eligibility of Election Commission of India is given. And Election Commission of India is a three-member body under which one is the Chief Election Commissioner and two are the other Election Commissioners. And currently Chief Election Commissioner is Sushil Chandra, Sushil Chandra and other Election Commissioners, one is Anoop Chandra Pandey, Anoop Chandra Pandey and second is Rajiv Kumar. So remember all the information which I told you. 
now we are moving to the next question which country became the world largest exporter of cucumber as well as gherkins so remember the keyword under this question it is the world largest exporter of cucumber as well as the gherkins so answer of this question is india answer of this question is b so according to the ministry of commerce as well as industry announced that india has exported almost 114 million dollar worth of cucumber as well as gherkin in april to october in april to october 2021 and became the world largest exporter of cucumber and gherkins. And remember, cucumber I think all the students know, but gherkin is also known as pickled uh, cucumber. Pickled cucumber. And it is made from the younger cucumbers that are seasoned using vinegar or acetic acid. So you can see here, world top exporter of cucumber as well as gherkin. This is cucumber, this is gherkin or you can say young cucumber. And Gherkin's cultivation, processing and export started in India during the early 1990s in Karnataka and the later extended to the Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana or you can say it is exported from the South India. And Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority is providing infrastructure and developmental support to the global market. Uh, this organization, this is very important, Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority, this was established in the year of 1986 and its chairman is Dr. Dr. M. Anga Muthu. Anga Muthu. And its headquarters is in New Delhi. So just remember this question as same as in slide. Otherwise, uh, uh, one data is important like total export is $114 million from April to October in 2021. And India became the world largest exporter of cucumber and gherkins. Now move into next question. Which bank partnered with the lending card technologies to offer micro, small, medium enterprises loans? So, lending card technologies private limited, which is a subsidiary of lending card finance, partnered with Bank of Maharashtra. So, answer of this question is C. And it is to co-lend business loan to the micro, small and medium enterprises at low rate of interest. So, the main aim to make economical credit available to the MSME borrowers, which is powered by the zero-touch technology platform of lending card, which is known as Together together so you can see here bank of maharashtra and lending card partner to offer small ticket micro small medium industries loans and you can see here the technology platform of lending card together enable bank and non-banking financial company to distribute unsecured business loan up to rupees 10 lakh so maximum to maximum loan can be given is 10 lakh and it is to msme borrowers and uh, the distribution of loan in the co-lending arrangement will be under the priority sector lending. Under the priority sector lending, which allows the loan to reach beneficiaries at an affordable cost or you can say low interest rate. And Bank of Maharashtra supports credit flow and using lending card origination platform, which is known as XLR8, to distribute MSME loans, which are sourced through multi-channel strategies. It means maximum loan or the credit will be provided through Bank of Maharashtra. So now we are moving to the next question, but you can remember about Bank of Maharashtra. Bank of Maharashtra was established in the year of 1935. Its headquarter is in Pune, Maharashtra. Its MD and CEO is A.S. Rajiv. A.S. Rajiv. And its tagline is Ek Parivar, Ek Bank. Ek Parivar, Ek Bank. Or you can say one family, one bank. Moving to next question. Which company launched India's first debit card with National Common Mobility Card for teens? It means for youngsters. And this company is Pencilton. So answer of this question is D. So Pencilton, which is a teen-focused financial technology company in partnership with the Transcorp. Transcorp launched a pencil card, India's first debit card with the national common mobility card for the youngsters or for the teens. And you can see here, this is Pencilton who launched a debit card with the national common mobility card for the teens in partnership with the Transcorp. And pencil card is a national common mobility card compliant rupee debit card specially designed for the teenager and it is launched with the help of national payment corporation of india because it is one of the rupee debit card and it will serve as all-in-one card like debit card metro card bus card for the multiple needs for both online as well as offline payment and pencil card is also a platinum rupee card with additional benefits like free access to the lounges at all airports in india and uh, uh, they can also be used for payments including the retail shopping, offline, online shopping, travel and also include tolls and the parking in the future. 
and pencil card can be activated through the pencil turn application. So this is very, very important. So remember it is for teens and it is also a national common mobility card as well as it is also a metro card. It is also a debit card. It is also a bus card. So that's why this is very important. And remember this organization was established in Hyderabad, Telangana and its co-founder and CEO is Vishav Jeet. Vishav Jeet Pureti. Remember the name. Move into next question. India's first graphene innovation center will be established in which state? So this question is very important because it is India's first graphene innovation center and this will be established in Kerala. So answer of this question is B. So you can see here Kerala gets the country's first graphene innovation center and the Digital University of Kerala has announced the partnership with the Center for Materials for Electronics and Technology in the Thrissur, Kerala to establish India's first graphene graphi Graphene Innovation Center in Kerala and the Tata Steel is robbed in as the industrial partner for this project and various scientists from the National Graphene Institute, National Graphene Institute, the University of Manchester and the other industrial partner will also collaborate in this project. Again, this is very important and it will be India's first ever graphene research and development incubator and the graphene has the potential to replace indium and it will lower the cost of OLED or organic light emitting diode screens in the smartphone. And the project will provide a wide range of commercial and the industrial application in the biomedical, in the biomedical, in electronics, in defense, in energy and sensors. And the graphene is an allotrope of the carbon consisting of a single layer of atoms arranged in a two-dimensional honeycomb lattice nanostructure. And graphene is the thinnest and the strongest material. Remember, graphene is the thinnest and the strongest material in the world. And it also has a good chemical stability, high electrical conductivity and a large surface area while being transparent and the lightweight. So remember the properties of the graphene. So we can move to the next question and remember about Kerala. Kerala's uh, governor is Arif Mohammed Khan. Arif Mohammed Khan and Chief Minister is Pinarai Vijayan. Pinarai Vijayan, very important national park is there, Periyar National Park. And the Silent Valley National Park is also there. Uh, Iravikulam National Park is also there. Very important national parks in Kerala. Moving to next question. Which bank and Go QII has launched Easy Pay Debit Card in a fitness watch? So this is a new kind of thing. And this bank is City Union Bank. So answer of this question is D. So City Union Bank, which is the oldest private sector bank in India, in association with the smart technology enabled preventive healthcare platform, which is known as Go QII, has launched a CUB. CUB stands for City Union Bank Easy Pay Debit Card in a Fitness Watch. It is a variable as contactless rupee on the Go Payment Solution part by the National Payment Corporation of India. So you can see here, City Union Bank launched this debit card in a fitness watch with the Go QIA partnership. And you can see here, customers can simply hold this wristwatch in the front of point of sale devices during payment like tapping card on the point of sale machines. And customer can raise a request for the fitness watch debit card through net banking or the mobile application. And later the users can be managed through the customer themselves through the CUB all-in-one mobile application. CUB stands for City Union Bank. And the customer need to enter their PIN for the payments above rupees 5000 and can also set limits for their payment using the net banking or the mobile banking. And even SMS or short message service will be sent to the registered mobile number for each transaction done by each customer using the watch. And fitness watch also monitors the oxygen level, oxygen level, body temperature, heart rate, blood pressure and 18 exercise mode. So that's why this is very, very important. And even this uh, bank is very important because the city union bank had earlier launched debit card in a keychain, in a keychain, which also enables the contactless payment on the Go solution. So remember about uh, city union bank, uh, it was established in 1904. Uh, its headquarters is in Tamil Nadu. Its MD and CEO is N. Kamakodi. N comma Kodi and tagline is trust and excellence. Trust and excellence, excellence since 1904. So remember this again, very, very important. Moving to next question. India and which country launched commemorative logo marking 30th anniversary of diplomatic relationship between India and this country? And this country is Israel. So answer of this question is C. So India and Israel launched a commemorative logo marking the 30th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic ties between the two countries which were established on 19th of Jan 
1992 so 30 years completed between india and israel and the 30th anniversary will be marked throughout the year with the array of cultural events so you can see here the logo this is the logo and uh, you can also see here the prime minister uh, uh, narendra modi and neftali bennett and india and israel launch commemorative logo to mark 30th anniversary of establishment of the diplomatic ties and you can see logo very interesting logo here and it features ashok chakra ashok chakra and star of david star of david you can see here the star of david which represent national flag of both the countries and it symbolizes the strong friendship love and admiration that exist between the people of the two nations it also depicts the growing strategies partnership and uh, it forms the numeral 30 depicting the 30th anniversary of the bilateral relation so shok chakra is used and a star of david is used which represent the national flag of both the countries so remember this is israel next is ministry of electronics and information technology released a road map and vision document 2.0 to cover dash worth of sustainable electronics manufacturing and exports together by which year and answer of this question is total 300 billion dollar is the target of electronics manufacturing and exports and it will be achieved by the year of 2026 so answer of this question is a so union minister ashwini vaishnav released this uh, vision document which is known as vision document 2.0 to cover 300 billion uh, sustainable electronics manufacturing and export by the year of 2026 so remember this uh, data and uh, it is the first volume titled increasing india's electronics export and share uh, was released in the november 2021 so that's why it is very important and the document was envisioned uh, 300 billion dollar electronics production which aims to increase india's electronics export to 100 billion dollar by 2026 from the current 15 billion dollar it means out of 300 billion dollar 120 billion dollar should be export by the year of 2026 and 118 billion dollar should be the manufacturing of electronics products by the year of 2026 and currently it is 50, 65 billion dollar is the manufacturing and 15 billion dollar is the export so this is the current worth and mobile manufacturing is expected to cross 100 billion dollar annual production in 2025 26 and current it is 30 billion dollar and it will constitute nearly 40% in the target so that's why mobile manufacturing is very very important and even national policy on the electronics in 2019 it was released and uh, it also set a target of achieving a turnover of 100 billion dollar by the year of 2026 but due to covid 19 economic fall this target is set to now 300 billion dollar earlier this target was 400 billion dollar so remember this exact data you have to remember examiner can ask only the data here move into next question and you can also remember union minister of electronics and information technology is uh, ashwini vaishnav ashwini vaishnav is currently the member of rajya sabha from odisha next is uh, important question section but you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link here is the question india has paid dash in the united nations regular budget assessment for the year 2022 not very important we are covering in the important section because you have to just remember the data here and exact data is 29.9 million dollars so answer of this question is b so you can see here india pays usd 29.9 million in the united nation regular budget assessment for the year of 2022 and india has signed up for the 2022 honor roll of 24 member states out of 193 that have paid their united nation regular budget assessment in full and on 21st of jan 2022 24 member states of the united nation have paid their regular budget assessment in full and india is a non permanent member currently of united nation security council because in the united nation security council total 15 members are there out of 15 five are permanent members and 10 are non permanent members and time period of non permanent member is 2 year and india is now a non permanent member of united nation security council whose time period will end on 31st of december 2022 because india become the non permanent member on 1st of jan 2021 and india's time period is till 2022 31st of december so remember this and remember united nation united nation was established in the year of 1945 exact date is 24th of october and uh, member states are 193 countries secretary general is antonio guterres headquarters in new york and remember united nation general assembly current president is abdullah shahid abdullah shahid this is very important appointment of 2021 moving to next question 
Remember this question from picture, Sydney Olympic rings champion Sylvester Zoloni passed away. He belongs to Hungary. He was just 51 years old and uh, he was winner of gold medal in the men's ring in the 2000 Olympics which was held in Sydney. So that's why this player is very important for Hungary and he was a six time medalist like one gold medal, one silver medal, four bronze medal in the European Gymnast Championship. And uh, he won the silver medal in the men's rings in 1996 Olympics, which was held in Atlanta. So, won the silver medal in the Olympics in 1996, won the gold medal in Olympics in 2000. And he recently died due to COVID-19 infection. And he has won the Hungary Sports Person of the Year Award in year of 2000, as well as in year of 2002. That's why this player is important. Just remember the name, Sylvester Zoloni. And uh, he belongs to Hungary. And he was very famous ring player. He was also awarded as a sportsman of the year in the year of 2000 and 2002. Moving to our one-liner important point. Here is the first point. Uh, Sydney Olympic ring champion Sylvester uh, Zoloni passed away. Already covered this question. India become world largest exporter of cucumber and the gherkins. Already covered. Pencilton launched debit card with the NCMC for the teens. Already covered. Uh, Meta or the Facebook built faster artificial intelligence computer RSC in the world again covered. Mansuk Mandavia launched revamped CGS website and mobile application MyCGHS. So what is the meaning of this CGHS? It stands for Center Government Health Scheme and uh, Mansuk Mandavia ji launched a website as well as mobile application. So uh, this have multiple user friendly features and the website was developed uh, in accordance with the guidelines for the Indian government website in compliance with the usable user centric and universal accessibility. And this revamped uh, website is aimed at benefiting more than 40 lakh citizens both in service as well as retired personnel with real time information from the convenience at their home. And it is, it is equipped with the uh, features such as the teleconsultation and the made available in the bilingual like Hindi and English. So e Sanjeevni teleconsultation facility is now directly linked with this application or website. So just remember this is just a readable point not important but you can read this. National Tourism Day observed on uh, 25th of January. So just remember about this day. And what is the theme of this day? Theme is rural and community centric tourism. This day is observed to create awareness of the importance of traveling and protecting nature. And the day aims to highlight the role of tourism sector in the overall economy of India. And the Ministry of Tourism celebrate the National Tourism Day 2022 under the Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahausa because we are celebrating the 75th year of independence in the 2022. And who is the Union Minister of Ministry of Tourism? It is G. Kishan Reddy. G. Kishan Reddy whose constituency is Sikandrabad. Sikandrabad is in Telangana. So remember National Tourism Day theme is rural and community centric tourism. Move into next question. It is the question of the day. What was the question of 25th of Jan? Uh, the BFS was constituted in. First of all, uh, in the yesterday question we covered, what is the meaning of BFS? BFS means Board for Financial Supervision and it was created in the month of November in 1994. So, answer of this question is B and it is to supervise the money market institutions in the country. And this uh, uh, Board for Financial Supervision has been constituted as an autonomous body under the Reserve Bank of India. So, now question of the day is linked with this. That's why I'm not telling you the member of the BFS Board board is chaired by the member of BFS board is chaired by whom so you have to tell me what is the right answer but give me the correct answer only in the comment box I am waiting your answer please like this video please share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link and press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time but it is a fierce crowd promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy like this smiley thank you guys take care and bye bye